is going on guys? This is Tony from TNA TV1 and I am bringing you the second GBA D-League round robin tournament battle. So for those of you guys that haven't seen our first battle or our GBA overview video, please go check those out and then come back to this one so you'll, you'll be all caught up. So this is our second battle, like I said. The first battle, Adam was able to get a 4-0 victory, which was great, so that put him at 1-0 with a plus-4 differential. So this battle against Quandao Ren 66, also known as Elo. And if you guys don't know who Elo is, he is a fantastic battler, a great dude, has great Pokemon content, so please go check him out. I will link his channel in the description below. So for this battle, Adam and I talked about some of the different sets he could bring. And we both noticed right away that in Elo's list of nine Pokemon, he really didn't have anything to stop Volturn. And so that's what Adam decided to bring today. He brought a, a Life Orb U-Turning Crobat and a Choice Specs Modest Raikou. And those were key choices because they all, in addition to being a good Volturn core, they also outspeed Elo's entire team. He didn't have anything to outpace either of those unless he had a Choice Scarfer. But so those were two key selections for Adam. And he kind of used those Pokemon to complement the strong defensive core of Venusaur, Heatran, and Florges. So that's kind of Adam's strategy going into this battle. So looking on the other side, Elo brought a team that wasn't really terribly threatening to Adam, except for the Mega Gardevoir, obviously, because it is just so powerful. It hits so hard, has great coverage. So it's going to be really difficult for Adam to get around that. Another Pokemon that was really troublesome to Adam was Arcanine. And that is because Arcanine can be run so many different ways. And the set that Adam and I discussed that we were both kind of worried about was a Bandit or Life or Physically Offensive Arcanine. Because looking at the team that Adam brought, he doesn't really have a great stop to that because Arcanine has pretty good coverage moves when he's run, running Physically Offensive. So Adam was going to have to look out for that. and He was going to have to play around the Arcanine a little bit until he knew what set it was. So now another little bit of background information on this battle. This was actually a restart. So Adam and Elo started a battle. They did four turns. And it was restarted because Elo brought the wrong Kecleon. So in building his Kecleon for this battle, he did not make up Protean. So Adam was nice enough to let him restart. And so they repeated the first four plays of that previous battle. However, as you will see, those four plays change a little bit and it does kind of affect the match a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. So Adam decides to lead with Raikou here, knowing that he can Volt Switch on anything that Elo decides to lead with. But Elo leads with Kecleon and Adam doesn't want to take a Sucker Punch here. So he switches out into the physical wall that he brought last time, which is Rhyperior. And here Elo just goes for the Fake Out, doesn't really do anything to right period, but he does get a critical hit, which is, you know, doesn't really matter because Adam does have leftovers, so not a huge deal. But then on the following turn, Elo goes for a power punch and gets another critical hit, so that's two critical hits in a row. And here Adam just sets up his stealth rocks. He wanted to get rocks up just to kind of put pressure on the Arcanine, and also Elo had no way to get rid of rocks, so Adam thought it was an important play. So on this turn, Adam wins a speed tie and just goes for an earthquake, gets really good damage off on the Kecleon as Kecleon goes for another power punch and gets a third critical hit in a row. So that's three in a row. That's pretty impressive. And that's really unfortunate because now Adam has to stay in here and he has to go for Earthquake because he won the speed tie last time. But Kecleon is able to just go for a Shadow Sneak and get good damage off. And now Rhyperior is at a range of health where he cannot support the team and take any hits from the Arcanine if the Arcanine is a physically offensive variant. So now after Kecleon has died, Elo goes into his Clawitzer, and Adam makes a pretty good switch here, just goes into floor just to take any hit that this Clawitzer decides to go for. He goes for the Dark Pulse. I'm not really sure what he predicted there, why he would go for Dark dark Pulse. Maybe he thought it would hit everything neutrally. Um, but Adam Adam's floor just is able to take that really well. This is a physically defensive floor just, so the special bulk on floor just is just so impressive because <laughs> it has no investment on, specially, on special defense. So here Adam goes for Wish, kind of it's just a scout move, just to see what Elo would do. And Elo brings an Arcanine, so this is kind of the moment of truth. Adam sees the leftovers, but he's still not sure. But now Elo goes for Will-O-Wisp, and at this point Adam knows that this is a physically defensive Arcanine. 
along with you know the Intimidate was kind of a giveaway too. But it's great knowledge for Adam to have that this is not an offensive Arcanine and he can play around this now with that knowledge. So on this turn, Elo just goes for the Morning Sun as Adam goes for Aromatherapy just to get rid of that burn. And so they're kind of playing possum with each other at this point. Um, here, Elo's going to go for a Flare Blitz to get good damage off. And that is really good damage because this floor just is fully physically defensive, so that is pretty good. But with Adam going for Wish there, he's going to be able to Wish and Protect and then get back to full health. So here Adam goes for the Protect as Elo just goes from their Flare Blitz. And so now Elo is probably thinking to himself that you know he, he's not really going to win this, this war because Adam can just keep on Wish Protecting and Elo is eventually going to run out of Morning Suns and Flare Blitzes, so he doesn't really want to stay in and do that. So he decides to go out back out into Klawitzer as Adam goes for another Wish. And this is a series of plays that kind of surprised me. So Adam goes for Moon Blast just to get chip damage off on the Klawitzer, which is actually going to be a two-hit KO. As the Klawitzer goes for a Sludge Wave, which does good damage, but then Adam does get the Wish back here. And I'm kind of surprised here because, uh, you know, the first turn when Klawitzer went for Dark Pulse switched out, I thought, okay, maybe it's Scarfed. But then... Adam's floor just still outspeeds, and I feel like a choice spec sludge wave would do more, but I'm not sure. So I'm not really sure what set that was, but Adam was able to knock out that Clawitzer, take it out of the game, which is great news for his team. So here Elo goes into the Gardevoir. You know, he knows it's going to Mega Evolve and go for a very damaging move, probably Psy Shock. So Adam decides at this point to just sack Rhyperior off, which is probably the best play he could have made. Um, Rhyperior had kind of done his job, you know, wasn't really going to be able to, to do anything to any other Pokemon. So sacking it there is the good play. So with Rhyperior dead, Adam goes right out into Crobat to threaten that uh, Mega Gardevoir out with a Cross Poison. And Elo makes a smart play, the safe play, just goes right back out into Arcanine, who is physically defensive. The Cross Poison doesn't do much to it at all. And Adam doesn't want to take a Flare Blitz or a Will-O-Wisp especially, so he decides to switch out and go into Heatran. Now he goes into Heatran here because he knows three of the moves Arcanine carries, which is Morning Sun, Flare Blitz, and Will-O-Wisp. So this Arcanine can't really touch Heatran unless he carries close combat, and when Arcanine switches out here, that tells Adam he does not carry close combat. And it would also be kind of redundant to run close combat on a physically defensive Pokemon. It'd be kind of strange. So Adam goes for a safe Toxic there just to get chip damage on something as Elo brings in Umbreon, and that's great news for Adam because this really is going to wear down the Umbreon or at least force it to go for Heal Bell at some point in the fight. And with Umbreon in, this gives Adam a free switch into his Venusaur, and he can Mega up here and just go for a Sludge Bomb because it's going to do decent damage to something. So with Elo going for that wish, Adam knows he's going to switch into something, so Sludge Bomb is, is his best option. And Elo goes right back out into Mega Gardevoir. And this is great for Adam because he gets a super effective hit off here, and this is from a fully physically defensive Venusaur, so no offensive investment at all, and that does a ton of damage, which is great for Adam. Elo does get the Wish here, which is a little unfortunate for him, but Adam does get the Poison, which really comes in handy in, in a few turns. So Adam doesn't want to take a Psy Shock here, so he switches out into Florgis, Florgis being fully invested on the physically defensive side, but that Psy Shock just destroys it. And so Adam knows his Florgis cannot take two of those. But he's going to stay in and go for Protect. And this Protect is important because instead of this Mega Gardevoir taking poison damage for one turn, it has to take poison damage for two turns. And that's really important because that will ensure that Adam can come in with his Raikou after this turn and threaten the Mega Gardevoir with a modest choice specs Volt Switch. Which from the range that the Mega Gardevoir is at, this a choice specs Volt Switch will kill it. Which is kind of surprising because Mega Gardevoir does have pretty good special bulk, but we did the damage calcs before the battle. We knew that was kind of the range that that Mega Gardevoir needed to be in for Adam to take it out. But he makes the play to go back out into Umbreon, and Volt Switch still, still does pretty good damage. And here he's going to Volt Switch into Crobat. So Adam figures, you know, this is probably a specially defensive Umbreon. That's kind of the way that Elo's been playing it. So he can come into Crobat and threaten it with a Brave Bird which is what he decides to do. Now, this was a strange play because I really thought that Elo should have gone back out into Arcanine to take the Brave Bird, but he did not. I'm not really sure why he didn't. That was the play he should have made. But now with Umbreon dead, uh, Elo does go into Arcanine. But Adam has a really safe switch here just to go right back out into Heatran, which 
Arcanine cannot threaten at all. And here we see Arcanine's last move that it has, which is extreme speed. So Adam's Heatran cannot be touched at all by this Arcanine. It's, it's not going to be able to do anything to it. And so Adam goes for Lava Plume here, just in case Elo wanted to switch out, because it would kill the Breloom or it would kill the Mega Gardevoir. And I think Elo is kind of trying to bait Adam into going for the Earth Power here. But Adam won't buy it, which is the right play. You just keep going for, for Lava Plumes in case he decides to switch. And here Elo, I think, gets a little bit hasty and switches out into Breloom, and Adam hits him with a Lava Plume. And that's the end of Breloom. So with Breloom dead, Elo goes out into Mega Gardevoir. And on this turn, he forfeits. So you are supposed to play out the battles and the Dealey Ground Robin qualifiers. I think Elo was a little bit frustrated that Adam kind of had the momentum throughout and Elo wasn't really able to get anything going. Um, and so he forfeited. Although I, I will say that I don't think it really mattered because Heatran would have been able to take anything barring maybe a critical hit focus blast from this Mega Gardevoir because this Heatran is fully specially defensive. And after taking one hit, he could have just killed it with a Lava Plume. And then once the Mega Gardevoir was dead, he would have had to bring an Arcanine. And then Arcanine couldn't touch Heatran at all. So it would have been a 4-0 victory in all likelihood. It was recorded for Adam as a 4-0 victory, which is great because that gives Adam a mark of 2-0 so far in the round robin with a plus 8 differential. So Adam's last battle was against Shady Sin, and that was later this evening. So Adam and I had to kind of, after this battle, discuss what we thought would work against Shady Sin and kind of go over some things. And I was kind of working on some damage calcs for him to try to give him an idea of, of what Shady could do to him. So that battle was critical because if Adam won that battle, that would give him a 3-0 record and he would automatically advance into the D-League no matter what any of the other guys did. So that battle was really, really important. And Adam and I will be dual commentating that battle and we will try to bring that battle to you soon so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you'll enjoy future battles like the dual commentary that we're going to be doing soon if you have any questions about sets or pokemon please just put them down below and adam or i will be happy to answer i hope you guys enjoyed please sub we'll be bringing you more stuff soon so until next time guys